Fascinating news today about our travels into outer space. Two private citizens will soon take a trip to the moon. That is according to SpaceX CEO Elon Musk. Our CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood joins me now via Skype. Bill, I, I don't think you have to be any kind of scientific nerd even to think this is absolutely fascinating. What can you tell us right now? Well, it's pretty cool. He caught everybody by surprise, that's for sure. <laughs> Uh, you know, SpaceX is already developing a crude version of their, I say crude, meaning people on board, a version of their Dragon capsule that currently flies to and from the space station carrying supplies. They're going to launch an unpiloted version of, the, of this spacecraft later this year, and if all goes well, NASA astronauts will start flying to the space station aboard it sometime late next year. What Elon Musk says is, two private citizens have approached the company. They're going to take that capsule, put it on top of a heavy lift version of their Falcon 9 rocket, and send them on a big looping trajectory out beyond the moon where it'll come back around with the moon's gravity, come back around straight back to Earth and landing about a week-long mission. But if this all goes off, they'll be the first uh, human beings to leave low Earth orbit uh, since the Apollo moon program in the early 1970s. It's, it is quite exciting if they can pull it off. There's no doubt about it. How about the cost here? You're talking about two private citizens going. What are we looking at? Well, first of all, he, he, he declined to identify them or even specify their gender, so we don't know anything about them yet. Although he jokingly said they're not Hollywood types, so <laughs> presumably these are some, well, I don't know, I won't even speculate. Uh, he said the cost would be roughly what it would cost to, as a private citizen to fly to the International Space Station. Uh, as you know, there have been a, several people who have actually done that. Uh, the cost has ranged anywhere from, you know, 30 million or so up to more than 50 million. My guess is a flight like this would be more expensive than that. Uh, but they're still getting a bargain. They're getting a big heavy lift rocket in their own spaceship. Uh, so, uh, you know, whatever it costs, uh, I'm sure that I'm sure they'll think it's worth it. What if NASA astronauts wanted to go instead? Would that be a change that he'd be willing to make? Absolutely. He, he specified this several times during a teleconference. If NASA came to SpaceX and said, hey, you know what, that's a good idea. We'd like to put our own people on board and maybe some instruments, things like that. He said NASA would absolutely have priority, uh, that they would get the first shot at this if they wanted it. Uh, but until that happens, uh, they're pressing ahead. He said both of these private citizens have already put down sizable deposits uh, to make this flight happen. So this has obviously been in the works for a while. Again, if NASA decided for some reason they wanted to go do this, uh, Elon Musk said he'd be happy to help out. You know, back in September, I think you and I were talking about Musk and his plans that he wanted to colonize Mars and that he wanted to send people to Mars by 2024. Is this just a precursor then for him? Well, he even mentioned that again today during this teleconference. His long-range goal, as he puts it, is to, is to help civilization grab a foothold on Mars so that humanity becomes what he calls a multi-planet species. Uh, I don't think uh, this is a step in that direction. There's no question about it. Uh, Elon Musk believes that, uh, you know, SpaceX is, exists in large part to facilitate people moving out into the solar system. This is clearly a step in that direction, and he said he didn't expect this to be a one-off flight. He would expect other people to take advantage of this possibility also down the road. So who knows? You know, we've got companies now talking about sending humans on suborbital flights up and down to space. Uh, who knows? We may have commercial flights to, the, to and from the moon in the not too distant future. Mars may be just around the corner. Bill, what are the concerns at, at this point? I know it's early. Obviously, he's talking about looking ahead about a year and a half. But what are the concerns with this mission? Safety, anything along those lines? Absolutely. And, you know, it's easy to talk about a mission like this. It's another thing to pull it off. The big heavy lift version of the Falcon 9 rocket that it would take to launch this mission has not yet flown. The initial test flight is this summer, so we're assuming all of that goes well. Uh, the Dragon 2 capsule that NASA wants to use to fly to and from the space station, it is not flown yet. So that's obviously got to hit the road, chalk up some successful flights, make sure there's no bugs in that system. They're going to have to modify the craft for deep space communications. They're going to have to put some radio gear on there. Uh, to make sure that, that these crew members can, in fact, talk back and forth to Earth at extreme distances. But other than that, uh, Musk thinks this is pretty much a stock Dragon 2 spacecraft. He thinks it's, uh, it's designed to carry people beyond low Earth orbit. It's got radiation shielding. It's designed to make high-speed re-entries into Earth's atmosphere. Uh, so he thinks they're just, they're just taking this to its logical next step which is sending it beyond low, low Earth orbit and out beyond the moon. You talk about the logical next step, but also how some of that testing hasn't been done. Is there a normal timeline that, that some of that testing would take? There, there is nothing to compare this to. You know, you can look back at NASA and the Apollo program when they were doing all this from scratch. It cost enormous amounts of money and enormous amounts of testing. You know, Musk seems to believe that the, the, the cargo ships that they're launching routinely to the space station, these, the, the crude version of the Dragon, the Dragon 2, which will start flying presumably late this year, 
They'll have a number of flights under their belts. Uh, but make no mistake, he said, there's no question there, there's some risk involved in this. And the, and the two passengers who have decided they want to do this, then they accept that. You said there's nothing to compare it to, at least in terms of the testing procedure. What about just an overall scope? How big of a deal is this? Well, you know, if you look back in 1968, uh, NASA launched the Apollo 8 mission, which sent three astronauts into orbit around the moon. That was the first time people had left Earth orbit. It was a very big deal indeed. And, of course, they built on that to eventual moon landings. Nothing like that's happened since then, uh, since those moon missions. So for a private company to step up and say, hey, we have the hardware and the capability to send people into deep space, that's a big deal. Uh, again, and I got to caution, you know, talk is cheap. They've right. got to prove they could do it. You know, the FAA would have to ultimately license the flight like this, the Federal Aviation Administration. So, you know, there's a lot of blanks that have to be filled in between now and then. But clearly, this is something Elon Musk believes in. He wants to make it happen. And his private company, assuming he can satisfy the FAA that everything's safe, there's no reason he can't do this. Yeah, you know, Bill, just in my lifetime, well, even outside my lifetime, I don't remember the first trip to the moon, but I do remember the space shuttle, and that certainly stands out. Those two things, maybe this is that third in the line as we continue to discover. Well, it's very definitely a, a big step in this whole evolution of moving people out into the solar system. Bill, Fingers we, crossed. We've got to wait and see how it goes. That's exactly it. Bill Harwood, our CBS space consultant. Bill, thank you. Sure thing.